Hello. Uh oh. Are you there? Uh oh. Who's is it? Me frozen or is it you frozen? You're Who's chopping frozen? Crazy girl. Chopping like crazy. Um. All right. Well, I tell you what. I tell you what. We uh, and this is the best we got. Hey Joyce, what's going on? Good to see you. Um. Yeah, hey guys, how's it going? We appreciate you showing up today. Appreciate you coming out. Um, I'm going to apologize right now to everybody. If you can't see me, I am sorry. I don't know what's going on. What I can't seem to. <laughs> do you get the I have no idea. Reference? Do you get the wrestling reference whatsoever? I, oh, 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 I do. I absolutely do. I'm going to lay a smack down on the internet is what I'm going to do. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Um, so, yeah, I guess. Hey, Jess. It, it, how has your week been? Catch us all up. So, last week, okay, so two weeks ago, there was a tornado that took power out. Two, three weeks ago now. Uh, the tornado took a lot of power out. A lot of people were out of power for, for many days. Uh, it affected the cell phone towers. It affected the internet and so on. Bottom line, I was out. Last week, the internet was supposed to be back on and my Wi-Fi was, was, was somewhat running, but it wasn't strong enough to be able to connect to you guys. Hence why, unfortunately, you had to do it solo. I, I came in for a brief second and kind of froze. Um, and so for that, I apologize, everybody. But you know what? It, that, that's the kind of couple of weeks we've been having. It's been beautifully warm and it goes from warm to cold to warm to cold. Uh, it goes from sun to rain to sun to rain. So Mother Nature's kind of having a little bit of a an episode uh i'd love her to get back on her meds because i like the warm weather <laughs> but you know that's that's what it's been like um in terms of, of paranormal activities is kicking up we're going through another cycle i think and um uh you know mm -hmm. i'm getting a lot of phone calls again it was quite dead for quite some time that's um fun. and it, it's it's getting better now like there's there's a lot of stuff happening that's good. Yeah. Um, we, we have, what do we do? Uh, what do we do? Busy. Busy. Good busy, but busy. You know, trying to get the house settled, trying to, you know, uh, thankfully my, my better half has had a good easy time, not easy time, but had a, has had a good time making this into a home. Um, and a lot of travel. We've been running around like maniacs. Oh, yeah. Look, guys, if, if you all have never been to Parrot hey, Mountain. Hey, Tammy. Hey, Joanne. Hey, Joanne. Yeah. yeah. Parrot Mountain was bar none the, the best exhibit I have seen yet, if you like birds. Wow. So the kickers, you gotta like birds. Um, but yeah, it was incredible. Um, and hey, Joanne, how's it going? Ella, how are you? Uh, yeah, it was incredible. Um, we've got a couple of things set up I want to talk about towards the end is the event uh, that we have coming up uh, July 16th. Cool. We're going to actually go do what I call a uh, shakedown investigation there on the 11th of this month, which is next Saturday. We're going to go there and do a shakedown. I did a show on that location and uh, had to be a two-part show because there's so much evidence. Right. That that's promising. I like that. But we'll that's talk about that later. Hey, yeah. honey, how's it going? Fantastic. No, this is good. Hey, Rich. Good to see you, Rich. Yeah, nice to see you. And you know what? I should bring something up really quick before we get into our topic. Yeah. Something that I've noticed, and and I mean, Rich can, I mean. Rich, you're here, you're here with us. You can kind of chime in as well, you know, say your yay or nay. But I've been finding a lot of us energy workers, a lot of us light workers, a lot of us, uh, you know, in, in doing the paranormal are getting spiritually attacked. Ailments are happening, sicknesses, illnesses, you know, um, financial difficulties or, uh, you know, like there's a lot of stuff going on. And, um, you know, I'm wondering if the people in the audience, you know, what what are you guys having? Are you guys experiencing anything? I just find that we're kind of going through the spiritual warfare where, you know, we're kind of being hit. 
Um, if it's not something that's, that's physically, you know, affecting our health, it's emotional or it's mental or it's, you know, I mean, financial, it's, there's so many things going on. And I'm curious how everybody is coping through this. Yeah, it's, you know, it's kind of funny. It's been going on for a while, I feel, mm -hmm. just for a short while. Um, I know personally I've had to have myself sage and, and cleanse and get rid of some stuff. Yeah, so is Lori, you know. Um, the activity is picked up as kind of a, like you said, kind of a, an attack measure. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I think we need to, to kind of look at that as, as, like you said, energy workers, people who, who work within that realm, because that is, and I don't know if it's just a matter of they're just trying to keep it, keep the, what I call the victims to themselves, but trying to help people is becoming even tougher. Um, yeah. Seems like a lot of things are trying to get in the way. Um, you know, that yep. kind of thing. So it's, it's, yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. I feel it. Yeah. See a lot, a lot of people. So, so, um, you know, Rich is saying my faith, Dean says, uh, does wanting to throat punch people count? Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, migraines. So Valerie says migraines for the last three weeks, uh, despite meds for it. Yes. Uh, and then Jen says, I've definitely been emotional more than normal. Uh, Mario yeah. says, ah, finally, I keep missing these lives. Well, thank you. Welcome, Mario. Thanks for, for stopping in. Uh, Steven, how's it going? Ella, Joanne, how's it going, everybody? Yeah, Katie, thanks for joining us. As you can see, I'm looking at multiple screens. Richard has the master. He's the one that, that can see all the comments. I have to jump through screens, so please bear with me. I'm not looking away or doing something else. I'm trying to keep up with your comments. Yeah, and Stephen's like, I've got the, you know, he says, I'm all tapped out across all fronts. Um, hey, Jimmy, yeah. no problem. It, it really is just an, an amazing, amazing time, I think. And it's not a great amazing either. Um, but I think, you know, we, I think it's at a time where we also need to make sure we also self-maintain. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of people, especially you, for example, love to give your energy away. To help others, yeah, and that's not a bad thing, guys. Don't get me wrong when I say that, but you know the reality of it is, is that we also have to be able to survive our lives, right? And we have to be able to to live through what we're doing to ourselves to help others. Um, you know, it, it was with psychic mediums, for example. There's a lot of time messages are just dropped on us until we get rid of it. So now you're, yeah. you know, it's using up your energy to get rid of it. For some reason, the messages are coming through like crazy. And it's, it's kind of like they're almost crying for help to a point. And that sounds maybe a little Absolutely. Cold, but that's just my take on it, you know? Yeah. No, I agree. Now, Stephen, Stephen Woodward says, uh, I'm actually tapped out on all fronts, health, financial, and just mentally drained. But I've been under attack for a long time now. Agreed. I think we're all, I mean, you know, Richard, you had mentioned that, that this is not something new. Uh, you know, I, I feel the same way. I feel like for the past two years, people have been kind of attacked, but I feel like it's coming to a front now. It's almost like people are pushing for this or, or, or the spiritual, I don't want to call it spiritual realm, but the other dimensions are kind of, the battle is on now, you know, we're in the middle of this battle and that's what scares me. Um, Joanne says heavy crying for not so much a reason just sneaks up. Yes. Yes. Emotional. Just feeling, just not being able to make sense of the emotions. Agreed. Well, that's kind of like you know, empathic you know, like, feelings and empaths, God love them. Um, you know, you guys are taking a bigger toll emotionally than, than those that don't have that ability. Um, right. You know, it's just a lot more to deal with. There's a lot more to, to handle. Uh, but yeah, this has been going, I feel it's been going on for longer than some people think. I think they put their struggles off on other things and not realize that, yeah, I think we're, we're facing the, I think we're facing that battle and I think we have faced it for a while. Um, and we're going to continue to battle it. And, 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 you know, you can't have, and I, and I think it's kind of, it's going to kind of sound very almost militant, but. You can't have that many workers for the good and not get attacked by the bad. Yeah. I, to, to me, it's a matter of percentage. So the higher percentage you have of people who are light workers, psychic mediums that are out trying to help people, people who are empathic, when you build those numbers up, there's got to be some strength to the other side somewhere. 
And I know yes. that everybody out here is not a, you know, a religious person, not into the religious aspect of this, but it is a war. It is a war. We're on the right side. And well, the you know, big majority of us on the right side. And there's a lot of bad side that has to be bad. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Every yeah. Day. Rich says people people with callings to help others have been placed on notice of spiritual attacks. It's a matter of keeping your faith and weathering the storm. Me, I've had my share of attacks health wise, personal wise, and then some, but keep on my faith. Uh, and then he says, empaths like myself, it hurts a hundred times more. Absolutely. I, you know, when I'm an empath as well, I totally agree with you. Um, you know, it's it's been a rough go. I think we're even waking up exhausted. You know, we're just exhausted. We just don't have any anything to give anybody. And Billy says, got to raise those vibrations. Absolutely. I've been meditating, believe it or not, twice a day. I've been meditating twice a day for the last week just to try to keep my vibrational awareness up to try to keep you know that self the self-contained uh vibration high yeah and i mean and mario is saying yeah so the the roller coaster certainly airborne at times where the motion's coming at you from every which way is 100 percent right um you know to, it, to me it's just now katie you you're saying you're a christian i understand that i'm, I'm also a christian I, I was a former minister so I get that, but the thing of it is, that's why it's, I say it's good versus evil. Mm -hmm. And it is. In a lot of ways, you, you can look at it from a lot of different aspects, but you could have spirit energy that is on your side and willing to help. I was, I had a private case where I had people who had passed away as relatives trying to keep a, a negative spirit off of the child that's in the building. That was a battle right there of good and evil. But that's what we're facing. I don't care how you want to slice it. That's what we're facing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, religion is corrupt, you know, but, but it, it's it's the religion isn't the faith you have in the higher power. Religion is just one aspect of how people believe in that higher power. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. Um, I have been called anything from a demon chaser to a person who likes hates to uh, uh, somebody that kind of I get I, I get looked at like I have a third eye sticking in the middle of my forehead because I'm in the South and they don't, they don't understand what I do. Um, you know, they, they, I hear a lot of negative things from people in that religious community who just don't understand. They're, they're ignorant. And I'm not saying ignorant meaning stupid. I mean, they're ill-educated. They just don't get it. Yeah. Um, but again, I think, uh, you know, I think a lot of that actually kind of, kind of segues into tonight's topic. Because it mm -hmm. is a part of what we have to do for ourselves. And I'm really big on self-care. As, as a psychic medium, as an investigator, as a team leader, I am big into self-care. You've got to. You know, tonight's subject line is drawing the line in the sand. How far do you go before enough's enough? How far do you go before you say you're done? Mm -hmm. How far do you go before you say I shouldn't go any further? And that is a fine line. I believe we all step on that line quite often. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when I do uh, tours and events, for for example, several of, of my guests are on here now. Tammy's being one of them. Um, they know I do a little spiel before we even begin the tour. You will not provoke. You know, <laughs> you will not provoke. I will tell you one time to stop. Next second time, I'll put you in your car. That's how serious I am about it. So it's just really a matter of that's the line I won't ever cross. I, I mean, honestly, years and years ago, I would say going back now in almost a couple of decades, I was that guy. I was that guy. I would get out here and I would poke a stick at the bear. Sure. I started you, you, you poke your stick at the bear. Right. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was that guy. I I had uh, I went pretty far with it. I had I remember one investigation. Geez, is this is this is two decades. I remember one investigation where I was in a place in the South. And of course, I'm not from the South. I'm originally from Long Island and Brooklyn, New York. Um, and I was in the South, and we were in this building, and it was a very very old building, and uh, I just couldn't get a rise out of it. And one of my investigators, who was from the South, said, talk about the war. Talk about the Civil War. 
let's just, yeah, go ahead and stoke the fire, see what happens. So I did. I said some really stupid, really ignorant things, and I challenged a spirit. Thankfully, for me, that spirit didn't have the energy to literally hurt me, or he would have. Because the EVP I caught with a very southern accent was, kick your ass. That could have gone wrong real fast. That could have gone wrong real fast. Um, how far do you draw a line in the sand? How far do you go before you say enough's enough? That's the topic tonight's, of tonight's work. Is how far do you go? Katie, how far do you guys go? How far do you take it, do you think? You know, honestly, I, in general, I think it comes down to, I think that morally, there's a line that needs to be drawn. I think uh, ethically, there's a moral moral line that needs to be kind of stipulated and, and to each his own. But I really think when it comes down to, um, when it comes down to what you're willing to do, I think it comes down to personal preference. I know what I'm not going to do and I know what I am going to do. And I know what I will accept and I know what I won't. But again, to each person is different. Some people want to push the limits. Sometimes they want to. Um, from a moral standpoint, disrespect. I, I, I have no place for disrespect. I think that when you're communicating with the other side, it's, you should always remain respectful. I think you should always remain polite. You should always, you know, and 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 um, approach it with with a, a regal elegance. You know, I think that when you're uh, disrespectful to these things, you know, that, that's where I draw the line. Uh, provocation, as you had mentioned earlier, provocation. You know, poking that bear, not okay in my books. Not not for me. Not something that my team is a part of. Um, but I also think there's a physical element that has to be uh, stipulated as well. And that physical element means, you know, you want to get that, that solid EVP uh, and you're going to, you know, I, I'm making it up, a, a, an old factory that's not necessarily safe. You know, running around in the dark with, with K2 meters and, and trying to collect that EVP evidence uh, you know, you, you, there's an element that you could get hurt there. And you have to remember that, um, you know, a lot of these entities know where the weaknesses are, right? A lot of these these entities that are dark entities are going to try to bring you to a point of um, harm. And so if, if they're, you know, they could kind of bring you to a point where you could fall through a board or you could fall in a hole or you could get electrocuted or, you know, something could happen. So, um, you know, some of it's your mistake and some of it's there. So it's, it's really getting down to doing your homework and knowing what you're walking into, knowing what you're willing to put up with. Um, I also think that, you know, drawing the line in terms of your, your illness, if you're sick, if you're ailing, if you're tired, if you're weak, then you got to draw the line. We're stubborn. You know, I'm somebody that doesn't like to go to the hospital unless I absolutely have to. Therefore, uh, you know, I, I push myself to the next level. And that's not always good because the entities see that vulnerability. They see that. If you don't think they can see that, they can see right through you and they've got your number. So it's really about, you know, having yourself prepared and for what you're walking into. Right. Absolutely. Um, Mario says, now, what about entities that aren't quite fully aware of their nature? Not in the sense that they're not aware of their passing, but human entities that don't seem to comprehend their abilities and spirit. Can their confusion come across as negative to those who first encounter them? Absolutely. Yes. We yes. We have talked about this um, several times, actually. You know, you have people that get scratched and go, oh, God. Yeah. All right. How about that bruising? You know, uh, pull the hair, for example. You know, Katie has mentioned it, and it's a very accurate statement that. You know, there's a chance, a real chance, they are unaware of their power. Mm -hmm. their, their actual ability to pull hair isn't meant to be, oh, my God, yank it out of my head. It could just have been, I just want to touch it. And that could have, you know, come out as yank. It, it, you just don't know. You don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not a firm believer at all. And anyway, I don't believe that a demon's going to be the one that scratches I think they have bigger plans than that. So I don't I don't really see that being something that a demon wants to do. But I think that we have to understand that, uh, you know, the, the awareness of their abilities, I believe, as a human spirit, um, I think that comes with time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they gain more and they gain more experience, intelligence, so to speak, being able to figure out what their consciousness is able to do. 
and then they're able to work it through. The movie Ghost is kind of actually pretty funny because it it does it does kind of go through some of the paces that a spirit will go through. Um, you know, of course, how do you know this, right? But I mean, I would assume based on what I saw that that might have been, you know, pretty close to how it should be. You know, what do you think about that? That he just talked about. What do you think about that point? Oh, I agree. I agree. I think that, um, you know, a lot of times entities will uh, be a little overzealous. They, you know, they're, they're very excited or they're very, you know, they have anticipation and communication. You, you have to imagine you're walking and, you know, somebody can finally see you and hear you. And all you want to do is get their attention. I had, and I've talked about this before, but I had an instant where um, I had done a walkthrough. We were doing an investigation and and I had done my, my preliminary walkthrough to get the vibes of the house. And I walked into a specific area and I had my throat, I felt my throat cut and I was very upset. And I told the entity to back off. And I said, you know, that, that was disrespectful and you had no permission to do that. And all the entity was trying to tell me was how he was killed and he had his throat slit, he was murdered. And so once I kind of I got that out of it I actually apologized to him and was, I said I'm sorry you know I, I jumped to conclusions thinking you were trying to harm when really he was just trying to communicate so um, I think you know if you're it's important to build a rapport as to where you're going if you're going to be investigating I think it's important to go multiple times if you can uh, to build up that rapport to find out because you know first impressions are lasting but you have to ask yourself why they're attacking are they possessed are they possessive of the property are they fearful are they you know have they been provoked in the past are they confused there's a million reasons we have had situations where exactly that they they were very pushy for us to get out of their space until they realized that we were not there to harm them we were there with respect we were there to communicate we were there to help them and then they were nice kind you know entities people um so I think a lot of it is us jumping to conclusions because we don't understand it. And, and you're right. We, I don't think we do. I think also, too, uh, we have situations where you're being told to get out. You know, here's how I've had to explain to a lot of, like, tour and event people that, that come out to our tours. It's, it's pretty simple. Let's just say you're living in a house. It was your house. You built it. You put it together, whatever. You're living in it. You pass. Maybe you don't know you pass. And then you're in your house, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, those people are just traipsing through your house. What's your first response? Get out. Right? You, know, you don't belong here. Get out. Mm -hmm. um, same thing when I've been, I've been in hospitals and told to get out of a particular area. You weren't allowed in certain areas in hospitals when they were active. So, again, right. we have to look at that and not take it as kind of an assault or, you know, not really so much an assault or kind of a demand. An aggressive demand because sometimes it's just a natural reaction you would have yourself. Yeah, you know, agreed. So it's just that. But I, I guess what I want to get down to is the core of for some people how far do you go when you're investigating before you say, we're done? At what point do you possibly say, time out, we need to step away? Because to me, that last part, the step, learning how to step away part, even if it's just for a half an hour or an hour, it's very important, very, very important. And, you know, energy builds, energy builds, energy builds. And you got to learn how to stop, cut. It's like you're filming a movie, cut, we need to go step away. And give yourself a chance to reset and give yourself the energy in the building a chance to reset too. Mm -hmm. Because if you could go too far, you could push too far. And, and no offense, I don't really care if it gets me in trouble or not. Don't watch this crap on TV where people are going out here provoking because it's not really cool. It is probably one of the most disrespectful things I think you could ever do to a dead person. Anything you could ever do to a spirit, I think it's one of the most insulting, immature, just downright disrespectful thing you could ever do. Um, yeah, you know, like I said, I in all honesty, I I played that game. About 20 years ago, realized I was wrong, realized I was an idiot. Um, I was working with another medium who was trying to help me train, you know, train better for myself, learn how to manage what was going on with me. And the first thing he said to me was this, and I always carry it forward. I, he said to me, he said, you know, let's look at this for a minute. Let's say you're that person in this house. This was your house when you were alive. Maybe you do know you're dead. But here's the thing. You had to suffer the physical death. Mm -hmm. Now you're in spirit, which is from what I understand from spirit, all being able to get out of it yeah. is confusing. 
it's a little bit like you're on Demerol. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and you're in a place that you know, and that's why you're associated with it. And then out of the blue, you got some jerk sitting over here talking to you like you're an idiot or a piece of trash in your own place. What, what good is that going to garner you? Yeah. Um, you know, so they've been through all of this in their physical life. Now they're going through stuff in their, in their afterlife. And then, then you come in here and you want to talk all kinds of smack because you think you're a tough guy. You're not a tough guy. I have gotten more evidence from spirits just because I've asked nicely. Just because <laughs> I have approached them as if they were a friend. A lot, it's that whole vinegar honey thing, right? That is exactly what it's about. And I won't push my team to the limit. If we get to a point where we're in a location and things get hairy, we're taking a break. Yep. We're going to take a break. We're going to step away. Because I'm not going to let it get overboard. I'm not going to let somebody get hurt. I'm not going to let anything happen to someone. Because we didn't know how to say stop. Yeah. So. No, absolutely agree. I think, too, it, it, it really comes down to where you're investigating and what you're getting yourself into. Again, you know, you have to not every not every investigation is going to be malevolent. Not every investigation that you go to is going to get scratched and bitten and pushed and shoved. There's a lot of uh, haunted locations that are very benign. They, they love to communicate. They stick around for the fact that they are able to communicate. You know, it's kind of a hard concept to grasp. We often wonder why entities stick around. And sometimes they stick around because they like to. They want to be with us. They want to be able to communicate. You know, there's there's entities that I've come across that, you know, are, are they, they kind of want to show you around. They, they they enjoy the space. They live there and they and they work, you know, they investigate us like we investigate them. And so I think, it, you know, it's really building that rapport and going back a multiple, of, you know, times and, um you know, building that relationship and foundation with them, and you're going to get more answers. In terms of, of walking into something malevolent, you know, it took me, my ego, and I'll, and I'll be perfectly honest, my ego when I was younger took me to places that was way beyond, beyond my my pay, pay grade. And, and let me tell you, we're not paid for this, but, you know, for the sake of, of words, I should have no, I should not have walked into the location the way I did. And I, I, I it was never provocation. It was never, but I didn't realize how um, they could affect you days, weeks, and months later uh, when you're working with malevolence and how they could follow you home and how they could not only go after you, but go after your family. I mean, you know, I, my family was affected and not even my direct family. I had, you know, just from that, um, uh, hours away, they were affected. So, um, I think it's, again, ignorance is bliss. We walk in, we don't understand. Sometimes television tells us a certain thing and we think that we can walk in and, and, and do it that way. And that's not always the case. A lot of times successful paranormal investigators and successful psychic mediums, you know, do wear scars. We've all kind of gone through it and had to learn the hard way or the harder way of, of trying to remain safe. Well, Ella says, do you think it depends on the entity? Uh, it only, uh, do you think it depends on if the entity is a spirit or other? Um, well, let me, let me just kind of address a little bit of that. And I'd love to hear what you have to say about it, Katie. Um, yeah. Okay. So in my experience, and this is just my experience and anybody in the world can disagree. That's okay. We're all entitled to a human entity, spirit, a human spirit as time goes along, gets weaker. The energy dissipates, okay? Whereas when you have a negative spirit for a wraith or or anything along that line, anything malevolent or, or a demon, for example, they get stronger with age. Uh, it's kind of right. like the reverse polarity on a battery, okay? So it kind of does depend. It depends on how old the entity is, what version of spirit is. So yeah, I would, I would agree with you, it does depend. I have dealt with some human entities that, you know, they're, they're jerks. You know what? Here's the reality of it. Whatever you are in life, you're personified in death. Mm -hmm. Because you have now the ability to do things like scare people. So if you're a jerk, you're going to be a real jerk. I, that's my, my experience, my belief. So if you're a jerk, you're going to be a real jerk. So you're going to be able to do things to people without them really knowing about it. 
things like that. And it's just those kind of entities that we run into in, in the experiences that we have in investigations that we do. When you run into a, a more powerful, a malevolent spirit, they get different, in my experience, I'm, I'm prefacing it for this reason because everyone has a different opinion. So as they get older, their ability level gets increased and it gets diversified. So they're able to do right. more as they get older than they did when they were new. So you have to really, yeah, I would agree with you on that. Long and short of it, I would agree with you on that, Ella. It depends on who or what you're dealing with. What do you think about that, Katie? Yes, absolutely. Vibrational frequency is everything. Your vibration, vibration, vibration. Lower, lower end vibrations, you know, like to feed off of lower end vibrations. And so they like to suck the life out of you. And so the more that you're dealing with these low end vibrations and, and you're tapping into that energy source, the more you're going to mirror it. You know, there's only, there's, I mean, think of it this way. You're driving in your car, you're riding on the bus, you know, you're taking whatever for transportation or you're walking and you're listening to music wh wherever you are, you know, a, a fast song, you know, a fast upbeat song makes you kind of walk faster and it makes you happy and it makes you, you know, determined. It makes you, you know, how often has somebody worked out to, to a broken heart song, you know, or, or, you know, cruise down the highway with some sad song with their head pounding. It, it doesn't work like that. It's vibration comes in many various forms. And so, um, you know, that sad song you're listening to brings up that type of vibrational emotion to you and it, it kind of makes you feel that way. The happy songs make you happy. And so um, it's the same type of thing that, that you're dealing with. When you walk into those low end vibrations, that's what you're going to pick up and that's what you're going to feed off of. You're going to collect that as well. And so there's only a matter of time before you can you align yourself with that vibration, you're going to stay at that vibration. And that's why earlier, you know, in, in, in the show, I had mentioned that I'm meditating twice a day now. And that may be over excessive, but it's something I need to keep myself high, to keep myself so that I'm not falling in that mud. You're right. You know, and you and I have talked about this several times. I'm going to tell you with my team and in investigating, I know a lot of people like to do individuals. They like to do solos. They like to, let me tell you, <clears throat> the lower the number of investigators, the higher the risk. I think going in alone versus going in with members of your team, you get yourself more at risk. Um, you know, there are a lot of a lot of spirit activity out there that would prey on the person being alone. So yeah, it might sound cool. Um, to me, I, it's not for me and my team. We don't do solos. I, I just don't. Um, I just don't think it's a good idea. It's like it's kind of like honestly when we, you know, and, and the ladies on my team will laugh at this a little bit. They go to the restaurant building. They go as a tag team. Okay. They go as a tag team. Um, you know, I mean, because some of these buildings are even in the bathroom. You're alone. You know, you're not. Um, but I'm big on it. If we when we do events, um, the guests are on our events. If they have to step away to use the restroom or step away because they just can't take anymore. A staff member walks them out. Right. They don't ever need to go anywhere alone. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we, we're dealing with a lot of new people in the business and a lot of new people in the arena of paranormal, uh, especially with my tours. We're doing a lot of novices, and that's great. I'm glad that you can get the experience, and that's wonderful. But again, the lower the number, the higher the risk. That's just my opinion. Yep, agreed. Yeah, and I've been told by several entities on recorder they don't like me. I'm okay with that. Living don't like me a whole lot. I'm just saying. You know, I mean, let's be real. Um, and I'm okay with that. You know, as long as you don't go home with me and try to prove that point, we're good. Do we have, do you have a podcast? I don't know who exactly you're talking to on that, Ella, but... Uh, Thank you, Katie. We appreciate that too. Yeah, I'm just trying to find that. All right. So Mario says, uh, now Rachel, you say they can develop their abilities as they grow in age, but do you think that there's a limit to those abilities? Do you Probably. think there's another tier of entities beyond spirit angels and demons? The only thing beyond a demon is devil. <laughs> um, 
in my experience, that's the only thing beyond a demon is a devil. You get to a point where the demon, I mean, you can even get a le level 9, 10 race, and they're going to go cerebral. They're not going to go physical manipulation. They're not going to go, I'm going to stand in the corner and go, boo. Um, they're going to go for the brain. They're going to go for thought patterns. They're going to go for your your processes. They're going to go for influencing your mind. Um, and they're not even a demon, okay? A demon is what I call mm -hmm. an energy monger. They will do anything they can to gain more energy. And they will absorb yours. They will absorb in the area. There is, a, there is to me, in my experience, I'm going to be prefacing that a lot tonight. To me, in my experience, with two different demonic occasions, you actually felt their presence when you walked into their presence. You felt it. It was kind of like, for me, both times, kind of like somebody just turned off air movement, somebody just turned off anything, and it just started feeling really negative. It was kind of like somebody just went, Pew. And, and then just everything just disappeared. Everything dissipated. And then I felt a rush of negative energy run up on me. And I got told I know where you live. Um, really nice to repeat a mechanical voice and I know where you live. Um, that's the first time. Uh, the second time was at a place called Hales Fort Air, um, on the second floor. Uh, it was just, yeah, it was, it was one of those things where you know you're in that position. I think there needs to be a lot more education about the power levels. Um, I educated myself pretty well on what we call rates. I mean, we have a team that has been on television because they call themselves race chasers. They're great guys. Um, but there is a reason why they call themselves the race chasers because they exist. In my book, they do too. That's my belief. I don't think it's just a matter of somebody's, you know, one or two people's beliefs. I believe in it. Because if you think about it and you do the education on it, there's a lot of it. Um, that's not that's not forgetting human entities that again can learn how to do stupid things, uh, you know, just in the, in the presence of their own enjoyment. You got you got spirits like that on a daily that are not demonic or race that that'll do that. Um, but the concept and the thought, in my experience, let me know when I'm done saying that too often. In my experience, um, you know, a human spirit loses power from day one of death. They just start dissipating it from day one. I, I feel that experience because when you see a relative who's normally right after death, they appear right after death. And sometimes it's just to make you feel good about the fact that they're gone, but it's also delivered message. I have never talked to anyone that ever had that experience after a family death member, family member's death that did not say that they did not get a message or feel that there was a message from that person. You know, um, I know we got way off topic, and I'm sorry about that. But, um, you know, it's just one of those kind of things. I'll tell you one thing, talking about how far to go, um, regardless of how far I decide to take it, I'm always going to carry Sage and Palo Santo. <laughs> always, always going to carry it. Um, salt if I need to. If I go into a place I know is, you know, parasitically infested, uh, I'm going to carry holy salt. water. Loom holy water. <laughs> holy water, yeah. I mean, it's, I've never used holy water, but I use clarified salt water. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's just one of those kind of things. I, I won't go into a place like that that I know is parasitically infested. You can feel it. As a psychic medium, if you're if you've been doing this long enough and your abilities are sensitive enough, you can remote view in, or you can tell what's happening before you get there. You can feel the energy change. You can you can situate yourself as a psychic medium in a way that you have an inkling, you have an ideal of what's going on, and you know whether or not you need to be in that building unprepared because I would never go into a building like that unprepared. Never. It's scary. Yeah. Well, uh, Katie says, I'm just wondering what happens to their spirit guides when they're, when it's not a demon. I'm not sure I fully understand that question. Do you, Katie, you understand it? Am I just missing it? Well, I think I understand. So I'll understand. I will explain Probably. as to what I think you're meaning. Um, so 
when when death occurs, um, we go through a transitional pe period. Okay, what what people don't realize is, and I've said this a hundred times, but for our new viewers, there's ghosts and spirits, and they're two separate things. Ghosts are earthbound entities; they stay among us. Their vibrations a little lower than earthbound, so they've chosen to stay, or they're confused. If they didn't realize they could transition over. Once you transition over, in my experience, you become a spirit. And the spirit entity is the one that transitions. Uh, it goes through an ascension process and therefore it goes to the other side, heaven, Valhalla, whatever you want to call it. It, 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 goes, it goes to the other side. Okay? Okay. Uh, <laughs> it is at that point, um, your spirit guides are done their job. Okay, Spirit guides are, are spirits that are done reincarnating they are people like you and i that are they're spiritual entities that um they are done living this dimension and they're therefore they are now helping us on on this dimension so they guide us on our path they're not allowed to make decisions for us they're only allowed to guide us okay so when when that transition period is done and they've welcomed you back through and you you're back into the classroom per se you're going through your orientation you're going through your learning process and, pre and preparation of uh, the dissension to reincarnate, they move on to the next person or to the next lesson, okay? You have to realize that even on this spiritual realm, we are re reincarnating to learn, but they are also finishing their studies and helping us. There's always a yin to the yang, okay? So it's not as if they, they just disappear. They go on and, and go to the next person. What people don't realize is we have multiple spirit guides throughout our lives. Some of us, I've had one for many years. I call him Jack. Um, and and, and I've ha I had a woman for a very long time. Now, I don't feel her as much as, as I see him. He's become the forefront of my energy. So he's more of my protector than, than Nancy is. But um, she's still around. And if I called upon her, she would be here if I needed her. With ghosts, ghosts kind of live, think, think of a racehorse with blinders. That's kind of the tunnel vision that you're situated at, okay? Ghosts are kind of stuck in their last life. So if I... I died as Katie and didn't transition or was confused at death and didn't know I could transition, I would only remember Katie's thoughts. When you cross over to the other side, I would not be Katie anymore. I would only have a chapter in Katie's book, okay? Think of your life as a, as a, as a large book and each chapter is a different person, okay? So of miniature stories, essentially. You would remember the essence of that story, but you're not really that person anymore. You've gone to the next book or the next chapter. So... Um, to answer, I, I hope that answered your question, um, but they don't, they don't disappear. Now, Francine said, I've seen interviews on TV of killers saying, I didn't, I don't know what happened. Something took over. Would that be entities talking over? Possibly. We have to understand a lot of the time too, that people having psychological issues will blame other things other than themselves. Um, mm -hmm. now do I, do I think that there are people who have committed murders based on being negatively influenced by a spirit. Yeah, I can't say no. Um, yeah. yeah, but a, a lot of the time I'm seeing that those people um, who have committed, you know, heinous crimes, murders, serial killings, mm -hmm. I don't see that being driven by a spirit as much as I would believe. Um, you know, it, it's hard to see those people commit, like, for example, yeah. Charles Manson. Okay, here's an example of that. People say he was demonically possessed when he did that, but he didn't do anything to kill him. Everybody around him did. <laughs> but, um, you know, he was just a mastermind of the whole thing. But the thing of it is, they all thought he was possessed by the devil. Well, he was in jail for how long before he died? And every interview he had on television, recent past before he died, he seemed pretty level headed. Now, I have heard and seen of people being demonically possessed. Mm -hmm. They don't come across level-headed at all. Mm -hmm. So to me, that was more psychosis than it was spiritual. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, people go into the, the, the brain is, is a, um, I don't want to get too far off subject, but the brain is an incredible machine. It also can be your best friend or your worst enemy. What the brain will do is the brain will block out crap that it doesn't think you need to experience. And I think that's what happens with some people. Like, for example, I know that there are some people that can't see things that happen paranormally, mostly because their brain won't allow them to see it. Right. Their mind won't allow them to see it. So they're going through, they might hear something, they might hear a door close or open or 
they might hear a you know, disembodied voice, but they actually see an entity. Nope, mind's not going to let them see it. And that's just how your mind controls yeah. what it believes you're capable of handling. So yeah, there's just a lot of yeah, there's a lot of ifs ands and maybes about that, to be honest. Oh uh, wow, we got a lot of comments here. Um, Yeah, so, oh, Stephanie, you're late, so you're fired. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so Adam yeah, says, if right. someone has an occurring, an occurring injury, like, say, a sore knee, can spiritual energies affect that injury? Yes, they're going to go for your weakness. They're going to hit your weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just a matter of knowing the weak spot. It's kind of like... To me, it's kind of like being on a paranormal team and having somebody who's brand new that has a whole lot of fear energy. That person has now become the weakest link. <laughs> yeah. That you know, that person has become what we laughingly call ghost bait because they are going to draw all kinds of activity, and they don't mean to. It's just either their fear energy is so high, their experience level is too low, and they don't know how to manage what the oh shit was moment was that just happened. It's when you have a, we had a, an event, the last event we had at the Hamilton house, we had a gentleman who was absolutely a skeptic. I mean, hardcore. And we put him in the middle of the human pendulum. And he literally had a spirit, an entity, lift him off his feet and drive him on top of his toes. Scared the man so damn bad that when we met up with his friends at the Waffle House later on, we asked him where his friends were, that gentleman and his wife said had the experience and he said uh well i don't think he's going to be coming back so we caramelize his onion huh yeah uh, that happens but that is just kind of for a lot of people on that front you know they, they get brash they get bold they get idiotic they get a little sloppy with their mouth when they're doing an investigation because they've not had that traumatic paranormal experience yet they've not had what i call the oh shit moment that moment where you sit there and you go fight or flight, fight or flight, fight or flight. Do I stay? Do I run like crazy and call you an idiot for doing this for a living and you leave? Do I do that or do I stay with you? And go, let's go. Now I've been fortunate enough to deal with majority of the time people who are willing to go, let's go. Okay, but there's going to be that moment when you have that paranormal event happen. Our son, you know, we had him on investigation, absolutely innocent. He did not provoke. He did not do anything. He got scratched three times. He got knocked to the ground by a spirit, a, a shadow figure that another investigator saw hit him to knock him to the ground. The poor kid was just, he was, he was, you know, he laughingly calls himself ghost bait now. It's mm -hmm. just, it's just one of those things where he just didn't have the experience. He watched a lot of TV, which means absolutely nothing in the experience category. And he thought it was going to be just like TV. You know, no, no, no. <laughs> so now, you know, he got, he became a little leery, which is smart. He needed to become a little leery. He has a lot of excitement for doing it, but he's, he's become a little bit, a little bit smarter about how to, you know, how to handle it. And, and that's kind of, you know, what we're hoping to see come next week. We're going to put him up on here. Yeah. We're actually getting a t-shirt. We're getting a t-shirt made that said, I am ghost bait for the haunted travel. <laughs> human sacrifice. That's what we got. Human, human sacrifice. He's bringing his new girlfriend, and we're getting a shirt made for her. Sit on with ghost bait with an arrow. Um, <laughs> oh, I can see that. You got to go live. You got to go live and do that. You got to let us oh, all see it, okay? Yeah. Uh, Tammy oh, says code brown. <laughs> yes, Tammy. Code yes. Brown. <laughs> you got that right. Code brown. Yeah. A lot I'm of times, out of moment in that location, Tammy, that we're going to on the 16th of July, I had a code brown moment. In that bad <laughs> really? Do yeah. tell, do we, tell. We had to, I had the team upstairs. So we're all on camera. We were filming. So they were all upstairs, and I was just downstairs in this what was an officer's cabin, um, built exactly like the officer's cabin was in 1797. So it was like turning back the hands of time for the spirits. Now they've got almost every building completed exactly on the same foundation, made exactly the same way from 1707. Oh. 
whoa. So I'm sitting downstairs on, just sitting on the table, you know, it was a little square table, just leaning on it. And I literally can feel this, like a wafting of energy roll back. And then, and that rolled back on me again. Now I'm one of those crazies. I sense more and feel more when I close my eyes. You told me. Yeah. So I sense and feel more when I close my eyes. So I close my eyes. And, and I do something called mapping. If I close my eyes, I get sensitive enough where I can point out where each and every one of you boogers are in the building. So I did that. I closed my eyes, and I could see this orb blob of energy literally going, coming at me. And I'm like, holy crap. So that was my that was my Code Brown moment at the did location you, that's coming up in July. Did you scream? I would have. Um, yeah, scream, I kind of went. <laughs> Yeah. No profanity there. No, pro you can. That's when you know how to swear in seven languages. <laughs> you know, you learn how many languages you can swear in. Um, no, Adam. You know what? To, to kind of end end that um, that question. Sometimes entities can put an injury on you. It's not even that they can use it as an Achilles heel or a weakness. Sometimes you'll start to get pain in certain areas: headaches, heaviness, chest pain. Uh, lack of, of, of ability to breathe or feeling like, you know, you're having an asthma attack, um, you know, uh, sore, sore pains, burning sensations. They can cause all of those things, too. Now, earlier in the episode, we, we discussed whether it was doing doing it on purpose or not. And yes, they can do it on purpose. Absolutely. Uh, when you start to experience that and it's something that's non uh, normal in your in your you know, in your life and, you know, you walk into a room and all of a sudden you're getting a, a bang or headache, not only should you remove yourself from that room, but you should also ask your guides and ask the entity that you're dealing with, if any, to remove that energy from you, that it's not welcome. It's not welcome. You'll notice that once you revoke its power and you revoke that energy, you're, you're no longer allowing it into your energy field. It's going it, to, it, it'll leave. And that's a telltale sign. Um, you know, I, I was having, um, I was actually doing readings. I wasn't even doing an investigation. And I had walked into a, a very haunted location to do these readings. And it was a gallery reading. It was a group session. And after the session, I felt sick to my stomach. And I thought, hmm, I went through all the normal things. Did I eat enough? Did I drink enough? Did I, you know, like, what what would cause all this stuff? Did I get enough sleep? Am I coming down with a cold? Like, what's going on for two days? I felt like this. And then it hit me. And I thought, no, 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 no. I know what this is. And I went and got the holy water and did a cleanse. And instantaneously it was gone. And that's how you know, um, you know, you you uh, are having some sort of a, a, a hitchhiker or energy attachment. Now, I know now that, you know, I wouldn't wait two days. Um, back then I was a little bit more naive and didn't understand what was going on. But, you know, that's a telltale sign. So if you're feeling sick, go through all the basics, right? You want to take your vitamins. You want to take your temperature. You want to do all the things you would do if you are if you were physically sick with a cold or a flu. Eat properly, sleep properly, eat, drink, all that stuff. The same thing goes for paranormal. And, and that's where another thing where you draw the line. If you're starting to get physically ill all the time. We had an investigator on our team one time. That every single time she came out, she was so empathic that she was physically ill every time investigation she couldn't do it she had to stop she just could not it didn't matter how much she cleansed how much she tried how much she you know tried meditated blocked it out or, you know was in and out in short periods of time it, it always resulted in the same and so she had to take a step down and she agreed that until she worked on herself a little bit more um that she was not going to be able to investigate and she has not since so um you know it's it kind of respecting that line yeah well, I mean, you know, she kind of became like paranormal fodder, so to speak, you know, and um, that's that's a rough way to look at it. Now, Samantha says, do you think the person's mind is part of the soul in life and in death? Your body is only a shell. Yes. The body is nothing but a shell. The body is a vessel yes. unto which consciousness remains until it is no more. And then the consciousness moves on. But again, energy is energy, energy in, energy out. So, you know, that's kind of what we get into that and out of that, of that anyway. Um, yeah. Okay, so Thomas said the last few weeks, the door to my bedroom has been opening a bit with no wind and backdraft. It's creepy. I can imagine it is. Um, 
we were in, I'll tell you a funny story. We were in uh, the 14th of May. We went to Octagon Hall in Franklin, Tennessee, uh, Franklin, Kentucky. And I had brought Lori and our son Devin because they had never been. Um, and we were walking through the second floor. If you get a chance to go to Octagon Hall, guys, you need to go. I'm just going to tell you, you just need to go. Um, so we were walking through Octagon Hall on the second floor. I was leading the walkthrough, just kind of going through areas where activity was. And, and Lori is sitting in the kitchen and right looking at me like, you're going to tell a story, aren't you? I'm like, yes, I am. So, oh, lost Katie. So we're walking through the second floor. And I'm leading the group. I'm ahead of the group by about like two or three feet. And we get through the room that they call the surgery room. Now, the surgery room is one of the rooms that was a bedroom back when this thing was made, but it got turned into a surgery room when it was a Civil War hospital. So um, we kind of get to a point where, I think I got it back. There we go. So we get to a point I don't know where what happened. I'm in a hallway. I hook her right in the hallway on the second floor into what is called the red or the green bedroom. And as I go into the hallway, I hear a doorknob go. I'm like, okay. And then all of a sudden, she's going to hate me for this. Yes, I am. Oh, well, you get over it. So all of a sudden, I hear, Richard. And I go back into the room, and the closet door had gone. That's what I heard. I heard the doorknob or the door turning, the knob turning, and the door opening on its own. Fully just going. Mm -hmm. Wow. They were sitting there thinking that it was like, oh, somebody's going to, you know, they thought it might have been another entryway up to the building because it didn't open. No, it just went. Mm -hmm. Like somebody was just opening the door, feet going through. And literally, they, they, I think they believe they got it on camera. They're trying to get it for me, but. They did not, Devin nor Lori did, they did not touch the door. And uh, what I also think is interesting is that this was Devin's first real experience as an investigator. Uh, I'm not doing a tour, so this was interesting. So, yeah, that, that is what I call the oh shit moment. Um, but you have those kind of things, you know. Absolutely. Uh, so much, guys, so much for the info. Thank you guys so much for the commentary. Yes, uh, amazing. Yeah, appreciate it. That's definitely a key there, knowing when to pull yourself out of the field. Yeah, you know, um, Mario brought this up. That's definitely key, knowing to pull yourself out of the field to resist the pull of investigating so you can work on your own needs. I have done that. I have taken, I have taken step aways. I, mm -hmm. I have done that. Uh, now that I'm back into it again, um, I've kind of tapered it to maybe once a month just to kind of, I mean, I was at one point with my team between residentials and filming shows and, and everything else. We were, we were in every week we were in the field every week mm -hmm. and just got to a point where you get just so overloaded that you just have to, for yourself, step away because you can't seem to shake the paranormal sludge and all the paranormal sludge does is gather up gather up gather up and then yeah you might shake it for a day then guess what you're back into it again exposing yourself to it and everything else um, you know filming a show takes two to three days minimally to be able to put a show together so you're exposing yourself for two to three days and then you know three on the average you know then you got that and then oh by the way we've got an investigation coming up this weekend and now you're running to do an investigation and you know, it just gets to a point where you expose yourself so much to it, to the paranormal, you got to step away. You've got to. Sometimes you just need to for your own peace of mind. I think, I think no matter what it is, you do, no matter what it is, everybody needs a vacation. Everybody needs self-reflection. Everybody needs to step into their moment because if you don't, you, you know, you don't, you don't realize. Um, a lot of times when you're in a thick of it, you don't see the forest for the trees and, and you know, you don't realize that it's just take a physical tool. As a psychic medium, that's my day job. That's what I do during the day. And it's taken me again, 
a lot to admit to myself that there's things I'm not capable of. I can't do 10 hours of readings a day. It would kill me. I can't do that. I can't, you know, um, and I'm so blessed and I'm so grateful that people, you know, contact me, but I get phone calls 24 uh, seven, people asking for readings or, you know, spiritual help or paranormal investigations. And I am so blessed and glad that I can help each person. But I've had to kind of go, it's too much. I need to take a step back. I'm also a mother and I'm also, you know, so um, it's really kind of that fine line that Richard and I talk about is what you're willing to do. You have to realize that energy um, is, is, is a give or a take. It can be a little bit of both, but you're going to notice that it's going to be taking a lot of your energy. And you may not notice it today, tomorrow, or even next week, but it's the, you know, the next six months that you get to get sick. I was so busy last year, you know, it's coming up and I hate to kind of bring the topic up, but it's going to be a year next week um, that I got COVID that I, and I got very seriously ill with COVID. And you all know that, you know, I was, I was very deathly ill for a little while. Um, and I'm a firm believer that one of the reasons that occurred was because I was so run down. I was, uh, you know, trying to be there for everybody all the time. And, you know, the universe kind of said, Hey, you know, we're going to make you sick until you realize it. And, and unfortunately, it took something like that to kind of wake me up. Um, you know, I'm still I'm still affected. with. I still have long COVID. I'm still affected every day. And, and I think that that's my gentle reminder that don't fall back into the same routine. And it's a hard pill to swallow. But you have to admit that to yourself. And that the same goes for anything, especially paranormal investigating. You have to be able to admit when enough is enough. Yeah, you do. You, you really do. Um you know, Adam said, have you ever seen a whole team affected by negative energy before? Yeah. Yeah. I have. I've seen, I've seen the whole team come home with attachments. Mm -hmm. That's not pleasant yeah. to see, you know. Yeah. And it's and if you have someone in your life that can look at you that understands what they're looking for and goes, you're not right right yeah. now. You're not. You know, I mean, thankfully, I've got, I've got Lori. She's got me to do that. And she's done it. She's looked me square in the face and went, you need a little safety. Um, and she was right. Because, it, you know, that would happen. She would stage me and then I would lose that that weight off of me. And um, same goes for her. Same thing. You can always tell if you look at it good enough and you've got that person with you. When it might be time just to, you know, hey, let me introduce you to my friend Sage. Um hmm minimally uh you know so now francine said just a few hours before my mother passed away she had her eyes closed and was asking for her mother but gave us the impression that all her deceased siblings were there but why couldn't she see her oh. mother i i will give you my two cents for what it's worth okay um there are certain people that are there that come that return to bring those people home, okay? They are designated to be the transporter. They are the ones that are there for the transition. Um, not every time a husband passes, a wife is, you know, that has already passed comes to get them. That's not always the way it works. I don't understand the sequence of events, but I do understand enough to know that there are times that it could be an Uncle John that passed mm -hmm. away 60 years ago, 70 years ago could be coming forward to be their transition person. The good news is I've seen very, very, very few people ever pass that didn't have somebody transition them over. Uh, it's a comfort thing. It's kind of a, oh, okay, so it's all right for me to go. Most of the time, just to be directly honest, not to get clinical, but most of the time when people who have or are suffering from cancer or whatnot, they can't pass is because they're in pain. Yep. It's not that they're not ready, it's just because they're in pain. And once they get rid of that pain, usually with morphine, for example, they're able to relax and they're able to actually let that transition happen. And, you know, they're the other in the interim, they were being blocked by the energy of the pain that took over everything. Um, you know, but I have seen many, many people who have passed that they're their spirit left them before their shell quit. Mm -hmm. You can see it. I've seen video of it. Um, it is just a legitimate thing. So it might not just have been the people that were transitioning her over. 
It might have just been those people. And that may have been what she needed to have to transition her over. Um, so just kind of food for thought. Not saying I'm 100% right. Just saying that there's a, um, you know, just saying. <laughs> there's a lot of involved that we don't know anything about. Yeah. We are not. Yeah. It, I, honestly, if you look at what we know about the paranormal, it probably would fill a thimble. Yeah, no, agreed. Um, I think, too, it depends on the transition of, of the mother. So um, transition is uh, different levels and different elements and different uh, vibrations. So some people are stuck in certain vibrations. Some people are stuck um, in, in, a, in a specific waveform, okay? Um, so, the, you know, you've heard of stories where, you know, um, you know, somebody's died and they're searching for their mother. They can't find their mother in death. It's not even that they're alive. They can't find them in death. And sometimes that's the blockage that occurs. So the mother could have predeceased. She could be stuck in the house as a ghost. She didn't transition over. This entity ended up transitioning and is now looking and doesn't realize that the mother's still a ghost. Like there's so many variable factors to this. So oh, yeah. don't get hurt. And I'm not I'm not stipulating that's the case that happened in your, in, in that situation. Uh, in your situation. I'm just saying that there's many different variants. That doesn't mean she wasn't going to go and see her mother. That doesn't mean that her mother wasn't predisposed, wasn't busy, wasn't in class, wasn't preparing. You know, maybe the mother had to be there for somebody else. Um, and so again, you know, it was predetermined that Uncle John was coming. Like there's many variable factors. So don't, um, you know, don't jump to conclusions. She probably got to see her. Right. Um... Hi, Lauren. Woodward said, yeah, two, two and a half months of filming is, is a lot. Yeah, it is. People don't realize the whole filming process and what it does as far as taking away from your family is a lot. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so Dean says, I have a big draw to just up and move to the East Coast. Maybe it's my gods or something telling me to go cleanse myself in the ocean because what I do isn't enough. LOL. I have never gone to the East Coast, but just really feel it. Maybe it's just time to change. Maybe it is. So, Dean. So, Dean. I'm going to give you some food for thought. Here we go. Our human brain comes to a logical explanation that we need to pack up and move everything yeah. to the East Coast. In other words, we bake the cake and we think we're going to eat the whole cake instead of trying one piece to see if we like it or not. Okay. If I was in your position and I won't tell you what to do, but if I was in your position, I would book a week vacation and go and feel it first. Get your gut feeling, go out there, see what it's like, see how you feel. And once you get to that destination, your requirement spiritually may be fulfilled. Maybe it's simply you needed to dip your toe in the ocean. Maybe it has nothing to do with having to move all your stuff out there. I mean, it could have everything to do with it, but if I was in your position, that's what I would do. Take small incremental steps to get to that destination and see how it feels. Maybe it's not even about the East Coast. Maybe it's an individual you're supposed to meet at a gas station on the way to the East Coast and it changes your life forever, okay? What our brains do is make that logical decision and it's our spiritual guides that are going, eh, eh. They can't make us do it. They can only plant the seed. And so that's what's happened. The seed is planted, it's in your gut and you need to go with it. So go take a week vacation if you can, if that's plausible. Um, Start to get, you know, ask your guides for the validation and affirmation that that's the direction you're supposed to go. You know, oftentimes I tell people, you know, you're if I'm doing a reading, for example, you're going to meet a man from England. You're going to, you know, England, England, England. Well, maybe the man in your dreams isn't in England. Maybe he's from England and he comes here. Maybe he's from Australia. Maybe he's from Germany. Like, what I'm saying is it's not always you going to the destination. It could be the destination coming to you. So really think about it. Maybe there's somebody from the East Coast that needs to give you some, some guidance that's here in this present moment so just slow down meditate ground yourself and ask for the answers and i promise you it's going to tell you your next step yeah absolutely um the best thing i can tell you to do is follow the direction you're being pushed and don't resist it you yeah. know i've got a, a dear friend of mine um her name is katie and she is she is my she's my she is my bouncing rock she's the one i bounce everything off of and she had told me that I would find a person and I would be moving south a little bit. Yeah, stop. Moving <laughs> south a little bit. She even told me the, the, the house that Laura and I were going to be moving into, including the color of it, right? So it's great to have that kind of friend. And we, we do. We bounce stuff off each other all Absolutely. the time. She'll ask me to read her and I'll ask her to read me and 
Uh, yeah. She's helped me through a lot, but a lot of people don't have that. You know, the best thing I can tell you is if you're alone in that process and, and something nudges you, go with the nudge. Go with the nudge. If the nudge feels good, sounds good, probably good. Um, and it can be scary. You know, I mean, anything like that can be scary, but I would definitely go with the nudge. Um, Samantha said some spirits or something even even know they're dead. Yeah, that, that for me, the whole them not knowing they're dead that part is rough on me because it's almost like you have to deliver a eulogy and you have to basically perform a funeral. Okay? Um, you, know, you can wish them well, you can wish them on their speed with, you know, to the light, you can wish them to do all those kind of things to say, hey, you need to go here, and, you know, you need to go be with, you know, God or whatever, and you need to you need to actually do a funeral. You almost have to perform the same stuff you would do if they had a chance for a funeral or something. They were, you know, they understood they were dying, like, you know, for example, a cancer patient or something. Um, but when a spirit doesn't know, and I run into that a lot, I don't know about you, Katie, you run into that a lot when they just don't know they're dead? And yes. I've, yeah. We've had clear EVPs that actually one of my investigators, April, uh, she was she, she was doing an EVP session and and you hear clears the bell, you know, you, you know, you passed on, da, 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 and, and you hear the entity go, I'm dead. Like, I'm yeah. dead. What do you mean I'm dead? Yeah. 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 For sure. The ones that kill me are the ones that, are, that come across a really sad response. I, we were in a place called Wielden Manor in Kentucky. And we were investigating there, and I asked, I was asking EVP questions, and I said, you know, what was it like when you died? And I literally get a woman back in the best way I could copy her voice. Said, Dead? That hurt. That hurt. I went, oh. Now you got to go through that entire process of, yes, you're dead. You know, don't know when you passed, but this is what you need to do, and yeah, you've got to do that. You just can't go, oh, God, that's crazy, and leave it alone. That's not right. That's no. not fair. So you've got to do, you know, what you can do. Sorry, I'm taking a drink in my haunted traveler's mug. Um, the kitty's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I, I'm waiting for mine is what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting when for my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the shipping's like twenty nine hundred and forty two dollars to go to Canada. Um, I can get you the tumbler for you know twenty. I gotta find a cheap way to get something up to Canada, man. God. Oh, I found a saddlery down here, by the way. Wow. A manufacturer. Wow, fantastic. Let's talk about that. <laughs> okay, let's talk about it later. Let's talk about that. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. You appreciate so, it. So Dean says, I wouldn't, I wouldn't up and move for real. I'm terrified of change. At least I finally got the job I wanted. Huh. I seem to remember discussing that before, Dean. We'll have to chat about that. We'll have to chat about that. We're trouble now, Dean. We're trouble now, Dean. Now, Mario said, do you believe the spirit can split itself? such as someone that passes from trauma or suffered a horrific death, is it possible that spirit can protect, isolate the negative aspects of it, which become remnants and negative entities while the other aspects of the soul transition in part to the next phase? Maybe it's our mission to heal those or these leftovers and return them to the whole soul. Yes, 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 and yes. So, thing, so first of all, okay, in terms of 3D, 4D, okay, 3D, 4D meaning our physical realm and, and time, 4D being time, okay. Um, when you, physically myself, if I was to get up and walk to my front door on a physical level, all of me goes there, okay. So, I get up and I walk towards the front door. On a spiritual level, it's not the same. There's no physical element to it. Okay, so the coolest part about this is my grandfather, who comes to visit me, I talk about him often. He's also with my grandmother. He's also with my mother. He's also with, right? There's essence of him that's able to split. He's able to split off his energy and be with multiple people at multiple times. 
Okay. So don't look at it like all of them has to be there. And now he can focus more energy in certain areas. An entity can focus, focus more energy. Now a ghost, a ghost is going to, uh, again, that lower vibration is going to be usually sticking to one spot. Now they can kind of that, that splitting their, their energy, they can still do that, but on a smaller scale. So for example, say you have a paranormal investigative team in a house and they're investigating and you have a team upstairs and you have a team in the basement. It can go back and forth. It can split its energy and go kind of the same place at, at the same time, but it can't, it's not going to go 10 kilometers, 10 kilometers, 10 miles down the road. It, it, it can't go hours and days in that regard. Okay. It's more earthbound. So there's more of a three dimensional thing, you know, um, effect to it. Um, as far as leaving energy, absolutely. Imprints of energy are here every day. That's part of a residual energy. An imprint is 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 essentially like a replay or an imprint of something being stuck in one one specific spot. So you may walk into a room and feel sick every day. And, and there was a person that was physically ailing every single day that died of such ailment. And you're picking up on that energy. That's the leftover energy that that entity left behind. Okay. Right. Um but you know a lot of lot of battles a lot of wars you're going to start to feel you get gunshot wounds you'll get pains you'll get you know feeling like you're dying can't breathe all of that stuff on battlefields and it's, it's very widely documented that these things happen so absolutely in my opinion it can split energy what about you richard no i agree completely i think also too something that needs to be taken into consideration is that they don't take it doesn't take them 10 seconds to walk 30 feet. No. They could be on the first floor and fly up to the second floor in a matter of a split second. Mm -hmm. The speed is not done at the same time frame because that time doesn't exist. Right. So you may have a spirit say something in a recorder down on the first floor. And, you know, you may have the team upstairs on the second floor say, man, this has happened here. You won't believe it. And that spirit could be on that second floor before you even start that conversation. Right. You have to remember, they don't move at the speed that we move. They can move at light speed to get wherever they've got to go. Time has no bearing on them. Time and energy mm -hmm. like that has no bearing. So it's not like they can only run you know, up to four miles an hour, uh, you know, whatever. They can move at speeds that you would not believe. I've seen it on, on camera where the camera couldn't even, the iris of the camera couldn't click fast enough to catch up to a spirit that was climbing a set of stairs. Right. Viral staircase on the lighthouse. Actually, it was on a television show. I watched that spirit bounce from that to this to here in just a matter of seconds. So seconds, literally. So it, um, yeah, we just had to remember something in our time frame. Yeah. On our time frame. Turn up my volume, Richard. I think Could you're laughing at me. It's not good enough. Could be. I think you're Sherry, laughing. Sherry, don't pick on me. Don't pick on me, Sherry. <laughs> um, yeah, series. Can your spirit guide? Oh, here's a good one. Can your spirit guide change, or maybe the way they communicate change? Yes. Yeah. When their job is done, they can change. Um. Depending upon what their responsibilities are with you, can change them. So yeah, I believe. What do you think, Katie? Yes, agreed. Your spirit guides. You have different spirit guides for different lessons and different times in your life. Some stay for the whole life. Some stay for partial uh, parts of your life. Some are only there to teach you a lesson. And part of their journey is learning to help you. That's the reincarnation process, right? When they're done being on this earth plane. And so, yes, absolutely, they can come in. And sometimes I have certain guides for certain things. I have a. I, I, I like to call him my beef. He's he's my protector. When I start to feel scared, I can feel him. I call him Jack. Um, you know, I, I asked him what his name was and he said, call me whatever you want. And so I named him Jack. That was my kind of, that, you know, um, and so basically what I did was, uh, you know, I feel insecure. I called upon him. I have another couple other guides that, um, you know, when I need logic or when I need, um, emotional support and I call upon them that it's, they come, um, you know, it really comes down to you asking them to be there. They can't push themselves into your place. You got to ask them. 
and part of that faith is is believing in them and trusting in the universe and trusting that they're going to give you the answers that, that you need and once you can kind of so to answer that question of how the communication changes oftentimes it's you it's not them you're getting in, inside of your head your the human in you is starting to take over and you're logically thinking instead of, instead of spiritually thinking and so they have to back off and allow you know your 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 vessel to kind of take over for a little bit so really it comes down to regrounding and recalibrating and reopening and yet the communication will start back up again yeah uh francine said can you ask for a specific god or are they assigned to you no you can't ask for a specific yes. god i've had that experience have you uh, you can, you so you can call upon a guide if you need it. You can call upon a guide. You can ask, you know, so specifically if I was feeling insecure, I'd say, Jack, I, you know, come and help me out here. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask in that, and I would ask respectfully, but um, in terms of, yes, they are, it's predetermined before you go through your dissension process. So they set you up of who's coming in and who's coming out, but that doesn't mean if they're not working for you, you have the ability to fire them. You have the ability to ask for somebody else to come in if you feel like they're not doing the job for you. And that doesn't mean you're ungrateful. That doesn't mean that you can say, get out. You know, I didn't win the lottery. I asked you for the numbers. You didn't give it to me. No, it doesn't work like that. Um, but basically, it's kind of like, you know, if you can ask for a little bit more, if you're still not getting what you think you need, you can move on to the next. All right. Now, Nadia says, I still would like to know when you're going to have a show on incarnation. Once, now that things are becoming stable, and that Katie's mm -hmm. had a chance to recover from the natural disaster, going Why did on. You say that out loud? Why did you say that out loud? You just Why jinxed us, Richard. Did, right? <laughs> yeah, I just think she did not. Well, it's already, I mean, we've only got nine minutes left already. It's already blown through an hour and 20 minutes, 21 minutes. Um, Unbelievable. Now I do I do want to spend a few minutes on a shameless plug. Yes. Sorry. So July sixteenth, we are unprecedented access. We are getting full access to a fort that was built originally in seventeen ninety seven. They have completely rebuilt seven buildings: officers' cabins, church, um, native uh, native chief, Cherokee chief uh, cabins everything back to spec they had drawings where they built the original fort and they built them back to spec so we are going to have a public investigation at this fort on july 16th if you want information on it uh please either reach out to me personally uh, or go to the haunted travelers facebook page click on events you'll see the event listed there get your tickets now the proceeds are going back to the park. This entire park, this entire fort, was rebuilt by donations and donations only. So I would love to give them a nice fat check to help them continue yeah. the restoration process. They are so meticulous about how to do the restoration that they even use the flat-headed thin-headed nails like they did back in that day to rebuild those wow. buildings. And they are literally on the same foundation that were there originally. I've investigated there before. I actually have a show on YouTube. I posted a link on my page uh, for that show. We had so much evidence collected on that show. It took two episodes to be able to deliver it all. Wow. Um, and to me, honestly, this could be uh, a one-time thing uh, it's hard to get municipalities to agree on allowing you access to their buildings so this could be a one-shot deal but i really appreciate the opportunity and all and i've got a couple on here now that have already got their tickets and i want to thank you personally because it allows us to be able to go back to the city and go here we gave it a shot here's what we got for you to help continue these buildings it's 49.99 a ticket not many tickets were left $49.99 a ticket. Go to the event on the Haunted Travelers Facebook page. Reach out to me. I can send you the link directly. Let's help this building. We are losing buildings and venues often that we can't get back into again. Now, we might not be able to get back into this one again or not. I don't know. 
depends on that as the bank goes, I think. But this is the way for us to be able to give back. So this is why we do this. Um, it's a very big section of area. Um, again, it's got seven buildings. This fort, for example, was a, a the first Cherokee-friendly fort where they actually built Cherokee cabins for their families and them on the fort. It actually was the first fort to succumb and, and seceded, be, be seceded by the North. They surrendered to the North first. So it's got a lot of history. Actually, the town it is in, Kingston, Tennessee, was actually the state capital for a day. I don't know why that happened or how that happened, but that's the truth. Um, but it's a place that to me holds, I've been there five times. And walking through there was Lori, my fiance, during the daytime. I caught EVPs just walking through the building at 10 o'clock in the morning. Just, it was that busy. Um, so, you know, guys, again, this is a way for us to be able to get back. We're going to, uh, we're, we're being allowed unprecedented access. They are opening the public restrooms for us as well, so we can have real restrooms to go to. So it's not like you're going to have to find a tree um, or go off property. They will have public restrooms there. But if you have any questions about it, let me know. I dropped some drone footage on my page and on the Haunted Travelers page. Uh, some some drone footage and some aerial shots that I think will might explain the property a little bit better. But if you have questions about it, let me know. I really would love to just be able to help this property out. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that to me, that is the only reason why I do this in the public venues is I want to help them. I don't, I don't have my team investigate the really largely popular, huge places because they're businesses. Yeah. I like being able to help out local communities and like being able to help out places that are new. Uh, we've got another one we're going to be going to called the Gainesville House. It's, uh, you know, that's in Gainesville, Tennessee. We're going to be going there to investigate, too. I'm going to try to do a live. I want to try to drag Katie in um, on this, too. She did such a great job at the medical building. We did an investigation out with us. Thank you. Uh, it was a good time, and I appreciate you coming into that, too. I, I do. Yeah. But, guys, you need to you need to come on out um, to this event. Again, reach out to me if you have questions. If you need a ticket link, uh, go to the Haunted Travelers page um, to get your tickets there as well. But we hope to see everyone there. And just like we hope to see everyone, yeah, we hope to see everyone next week. You got any final thoughts, Katie? No, just be good to everybody. You know, be safe, be happy, happy, happy hunting. Thank you, Samantha. Yeah, happy hunting. Be careful. Safe hunting. Yeah. Safe hunting. Be careful. We've got an investigation coming down this Saturday at the fort. We're going to do a shakedown investigation just to kind of see how things are going um, there. But I've never been there and not been super occupied. But we'll see how it goes. Guys, we appreciate you coming out. We appreciate you showing up. As always, Mario, not a problem. Uh, we appreciate the question. Thank you so much. Yes, we, we love you. the fact that you're here. Yep. We, we appreciate you tremendously. So, uh, guys, we hope to see you next week. We will try to work on a time for the incarnation conversation. Now we've got things kind of stabilized with Katie. Now she's kind of back on the fold. Um, but, guys, take care of yourselves and be nice to each other, okay? We'll talk Bye. to you later. Bye.